Hi, I'm Bobby. Today, we're mixing the Rapier Physics Engine Fast Stable WebAssembly Module with 3JS. With a few lines of JavaScript, we'll bring dynamic collisions and forces to your 3JS scene. From laying down our foundational setup to linking collision bodies with our 3D objects, this lesson will be dynamic, literally. Strap in, sharpen your minds, and let's get the physics party started. Okay, we're gonna start simple. A 3JS scene with a single object in it and some background sprites. From here, we're gonna add a bunch of geometry, in this case, an icosahedron. Then we'll wire up mouse controls and we'll have a little light ball moving around. Once that's all in place, we'll add Rapier Physics Engine so that the objects are colliding with each other and with the mouse. And lastly, add some post-processing, some Unreal Bloom for a really cool glowy effect. Let's get started. Here's our basic boilerplate where I set up the renderer and the scene and the camera. I'm creating a, a container for the mouse position and now I'm just creating a bunch of bodies. So let's up that to 10. Let's make these a little bit smaller. I'm adding this mouse ball as well. Before we move on, let's just look at what get body and get mouse ball give to us because there's a lot going on here. I'm gonna pick a random position in space between range and half range, so in this case, between negative one and one. Uh, I'm gonna make some geometry and then add a wireframe geometry to that and then return that. So that's all that's doing. The get mouse ball is the same thing, only, um, let's have an update method too, no. Only I'm adding this update method, wherein it's just moving or where the mouse moves. Let's add that update method here. And let's call this, what's it called? Mouse ball dot update and pass in mouse pause. So now nothing happens. Why not? Mm, I'm not sure why not. Oh, because of this. Already that's really cool, right? Just moving this light around. I'm not sure if I made it clear, but when I created this mouse ball, I'm creating a little point light and attaching that to the ball. So as it moves around, you get this cool lighting effect. Great. Now, um, the next thing to do, we've got a bunch of geometry. We wired up some mouse controls for interaction. Let's add the physics. First thing we'll do is import the Rapier Physics Engine from this CDN up here. Next, I'm going to initialize the Rapier Physics Engine, define gravity, and create a world. I don't know why it's let, it should be const, right? And create a world passing in that gravity. Lastly, down here in our animate method, we'll call world dot step. So that's hooked up. Not much has changed because none of these objects in my scene have any physics associated with them. Let's change that. I've already created the methods to link the Rapier Physics Engine's rigid bodies to the 3JS geometry. So let's use that instead. I'm going to pass in Rapier and World. Same here, rapier world. And it doesn't look much different. Let's take a look at that setup and then fix that as well. So first let's get the, the mouse ball. It's the same code as before, where I simply create some geometry and a material and a mesh and add it to the, and add a light as well. But this time I'm also setting up a rigid body. The way to do that with Rapier is to pick a rigid body description type. Um, there are four types. I'm only familiar with two of them because I'm only using two. This kin kinematic position based is useful for interactive objects, like objects that are gonna track the mouse move, for example. I create 
a rigid body using that description and I create a collider as well. In this case, it's a ball collider set to the size of the ball. Oh, times three, because I wanted it to have more of an impact, so I, I scaled it up. And lastly, I have this update method, which is just gonna set the mouse rigid body to the mouse position and then update the mesh to. That's it. Real quick looking at the get body, same as before, only now we're adding a rigid body description. This one's dynamic, so it's not controlled by anything but the simulation. Creating a rigid body with that description and a collider, another ball collider, and I'm setting the density in this case. Um, the density, uh, uh, we'll play with that in a bit to see what it looks like. And then creating a collider. There's the geometry setup. And lastly, I've got this update method. I am resetting all the forces and I'm, I want to, I, I, I've defined a point at the middle of the scene that everything will be attracted to. I'm calculating the position from the current ball to the center of the scene. I'm, that's the sub. I'm like subtracting the position from the center position. And then I'm adding force to that, the result of that subtraction and scaling it down a little bit. Can't remember what true means exactly. And then I'm setting the position of the 3J object, 3JS object as well. Let's call that update method inside our animate here. Let's say bodies dot for each body dot update. And just like that, all the balls are being pulled toward the center of the scene and then they're colliding with this light. Isn't that just really cool? I just think it's so good. Now it's time to add the post-processing. The thing to note here is this Unreal Bloom Pass. Okay, here's the Bloom Pass. I'm gonna set its threshold and strength and radius. I don't know what these are. Just play with the values until it looks good. The last thing to do is with this Effects Composer, that's gonna replace our renderer in this method here. Oh my God, it's really, really glowy. Let's turn down the sprites in the background tone those down and then let's dim down the hemisphere light as well hemi light dot intensity is equal to 0 0.2 instead of 1 Woo. how cool is that it's really glowy is it too glowy let's look at this value here maybe it's not glowy enough we could drop the we could drop the brightness of the point light if we want. Set it to a two, let's set it to a one. It still looks really good. I kind of want to play with the threshold to see if we can make the, the glow look more like more glowy. This should be a lot more glowy. Huh. It's actually okay. It's not that bad. I'm gonna make this ten times more glowy. That's pretty cool, but it's not really what I wanted. Um, something to play with. Change the color of the wireframe on the, on the balls. Right now they're black. Let's make them white. And <laughs> That changes things significantly, doesn't it? Um, too much. That looks kind of cool, too. There's something too chattery about the, the white, though. What if I dim it down to, like, I don't know. Four, five, six. That's pretty cool. 
I think I like the black better. What does red look like? No, it's way too much. And that's just interesting, but not quite right. Oh, that's pretty cool. So, some things you can try. Uh, you can tweak the settings all day and, and see what else cool you come up with. Also, try adding other shapes like cubes or text geometry or other simple models. Um, try creating a simple game or come up with another interactive physics simulation. As always, thanks for coming by and please leave a comment below with your thoughts or any suggestions you might have or questions. Um, thanks so much. See you next time.